Ron DeSantis' debate strategy memos have been revealed, and they address his notorious awkwardness on the campaign trail. One section suggests that he invoke a personal anecdote story about family, kids, Casey, showing emotion. It also reads, there are four basic must-dos. One of the memos urges DeSantis, whom the document refers to as GRD. One, attack Joe Biden and the media three to five times. Two, state GRD's positive vision two to three times. Three, hammer Vivek Ramaswamy in a response. And four, defend Donald Trump in absentia in response to a Chris Christie attack. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump has maintained the lead in a new Emerson College polling survey of New Hampshire voters, taking 49 percent of the vote. Where did the other contenders come in? Well, the poll shows Chris Christie with 9 percent, Ron DeSantis at 8, Tim Scott with 6, Doug Burgum and Nikki Haley each at 4, Vivek Ramaswamy with 3 percent, Perry Johnson at 2, Mike Pence and Will Hurd each at 1 percent, and 13 percent of voters undecided. I don't know if I buy this poll, Jessica. Every other New Hampshire poll that I've seen has Vivek Ramaswamy in second place, and I find it quite surprising that Doug Burgum, who nobody even knows who he is, nobody knows who Perry Johnson is, somehow polling above uh, former Vice President Mike Pence. But um, it just seems like this poll is an outlier based on everything else I've seen. Um, but I guess we'll we'll see what happens after this upcoming debate as well. On this question of uh, Governor Ron DeSantis's debate prep, this is really interesting that all of this got leaked. Um, basically, what happened here is that Never Back Down PAC uh, commissioned this report on how DeSantis should approach his strategy heading into the debate. And because super PACs are barred from officially coordinating with directly with candidates, what usually happens is these PACs will post their strategy and their various documents for the candidate, polling, what have you, on secretive parts of, of the internet where only the candidate and the campaign know to look. But apparently what happened here is that somebody from the New York Times was tipped off to where this debate strategy was going to be posted on Axiom Strategy's website. They found it before it was taken down and they were able to download the entire document themselves. So there's nothing out of the ordinary necessarily in how they went about trying to get this strategy over to Ron DeSantis. But clearly they either have a leaker within Never Back Down Pack or Axiom Strategies or they wanted the media to see this for some reason. Yeah, I think it goes to show how unlikable DeSantis has become as a politician because it's not the first time his debate prep has been leaked. We have videos of him and Matt Gates talking about what the strategy was for the debates during his gubernatorial race with uh, advice that be likable, be written at the top of his sheet that he has in front of him during the debates, as if that was something that he could forget and need to be reminded of. But if you see the videos of him on the campaign trail, all of his gaffes and antisocial moments, it's pretty obvious that he does actually need to be reminded to be likable. But I think it goes to show that even people from within the DeSantis camp aren't particularly jazzed about him as a person or as a candidate for president, whether it's someone that wants a different candidate to get the lead in the primary race for the Republicans, or it's just someone who's been around DeSantis that doesn't like him anymore because of how they've been treated on the campaign. It's like Christmas morning for me when stuff like this is leaked, but the Emerson polling shows that he's not really a front runner anymore. I think you're right to question that Emerson polling it does make sense that Ramaswamy would be a front runner in a state like New Hampshire, where there's a lot of independent voters, a lot of libertarians that have political views that tend towards Ramaswamy's. But nevertheless, it looks like DeSantis isn't doing too well. And the explanation for the polling at Emerson could just be that they concentrated this to folks that always participate in Republican primary uh, you know, elections the way that they decide what the population of concern is for this polling varies. They could just be looking at really reliable Republican primary voters. So I think this could just be the result of the population they decided to poll. 
But lots of things are changing in the Republican primary race. But what's not changing is that Trump is a very clear front runner, which makes it more interesting that the suggested strategy is to kind of hit at Trump, even though he's not going to be, you know, present at those debates. So I think that that's probably not a strategy unique to Ron DeSantis. Yeah, I want to go back to your point about how this could have come from somebody who is uh, no longer a fan of Governor DeSantis because of the way the campaign is going, because the strategy laid out in this document is so bad that one of the only possible explanations for it even seeing the light of day is that this is a form of self-sabotage. Um, the idea that DeSantis can avoid attacking Trump when Trump has already labeled him to sanctimonious and gone after him aggressively to the point that he's cratering in the polls is just going to make DeSantis appear weak. Um, you can't just go back and pretend that you're not feuding with the former president at this point in time um, and then redirect your focus on Vivek Ramaswamy with these canned lines calling him Vivek the fake and trying to attack his record that way. Um, not to mention that, meanwhile, if DeSantis is taking it easy on Trump in the debate, he still has all of his surrogates on social media constantly sparring with Trump supporters and Trump campaign officials to the point that a lot of those online battles have gotten particularly nasty. And we also saw reporting um, this past week from both The Spectator and Puck News, or excuse me, Politico, that there was a bar fight, not physical, but still a bar fight between Jeff Rowe and Aaron Perrine, who are both officials with never back down. Again, Jeff Rowe runs Axiom Strategies, the website that this debate strategy was uh, was posted on. Axiom Strategies is advising never back down pack. They apparently saw a Kerry Lake uh, staffer who was wearing a hat that said Trump is the Iowa back to back champ. 2016 and 2020. And the hats were supposed to refer to the fact that Trump won the state in the general election both times. But Jeff Rowe and Aaron Perini apparently didn't understand the hat. They thought it was about the primary. And they started belligerently yelling at this Kerry Lake staffer saying that Trump lost in 2016 to Ted Cruz. Now, not so coincidentally, Jeff Rowe was the campaign manager for Ted Cruz back in 2016. So this is getting very, very messy. I know that I love a little bit of campaign consultant drama, um, and this has it in spades. Um, the fact that this, again, this really bad debate strategy leaked um, seems to me like it could be the result of some kind of self-sabotage. And even if it's not, DeSantis can't use any of the material from this now because if he goes on stage and says Vivek the fake after we all got to read this document in preparation, he's going to come across as even more of a phony than many Americans already feel that he is. I'm not sure who the audience now will be for these primary debates. Donald Trump won't be there. You have a bunch of candidates that are likely planning to attack Donald Trump in his absence. You have DeSantis running interference for Donald Trump only if Chris Christie attacks him, suggesting that Chris Christie is the only substantive threat they see or the only establishment candidate that they should be punching back at. It's just fascinating to think that this might be a Republican primary debate that is just watched by the politically engaged class, not even necessarily Republican primary voters. I think there's a, a huge base of voters that aren't interested in tuning in because they plan on casting their ballots for Donald Trump. Also, because it seems that all of their uh, strategies are tailor made for the first primary for New Hampshire. Uh, they might not think that folks in Iowa are planning on tuning in, but to have Vivek Ramaswamy, who's leading in polling in New Hampshire, be the main target, I think tells you a lot about how these candidates campaign. And it's they focus on each primary state one at a time and adjust their political messaging according to the political sentiments that are popular in the state where the next primary or set of primaries is, which is so inauthentic. Just when we think about what our political process should be, your platform and messaging should be consistent across the states, not tailor made for the audience. But that's really what happens when we have our political industrial complex extend to the state that it's at right now. I'm just curious who the audience for this debate is going to be. It seems to me that it's just entertainment for the political class at this point. Yeah, it definitely feels that way, especially when we saw these candidates try to make their way 
around the Iowa State Fair last week. Um, they were, of course, eating their corn dogs and riding on their bumper cars and trying to prove that they're normal people. It backfired for quite a few of them. I know DeSantis was accused of shutting down a bumper car ride so that his family could go on it. Um, they defended themselves, claiming that the ride was not shut down, but the photographs of the event show that him and his family were the only ones on it, so I don't know what was going on there. And I believe Tim Scott went to the fair on a Tuesday when no one really goes because everybody goes on the weekend when they're off of work. Um, so just some really inauthentic stuff going on, as you said, um, to watch their strategies change as the primary process goes on is always uh, pretty fascinating from a consultancy perspective. Unfortunately, not so much fun for an American voter. We'll be back with more Rising after this.